In order to help you to visualize this course, I've provided a diagram showing an overview of everything we're going to look at. But I also think it will be helpful if I just talk you through what we're going to cover on the course. Now, you might want to have a listen to this before you do the course and also come back to it afterwards when it will mean a lot more because then it will be a summary of everything we've done. So if you look at the diagram, you'll see that the marketing process consists of five rectangles. Deciding what business we're in, both now and in the future. Understanding our customers, then working out what our key success factors or our competitive advantage is going to be when we serve those customers. Then building that into a strategy, what's our future strategy going to be. And then finally, communicating that strategy to the customers. Now what some people do is they jump straight to the communication bit. They just dream up a product, which is something that they can make or that they want to make or they think will sell. And they go straight to communication. How do I tell people about my great product? And they think that that's what marketing is. But as we're going to see on this course, marketing is so much more than just communicating what your product is. It's about understanding what your product should be. So let's have a look at a bit more of the detail of what we're going to cover. That first section, what business are we in, both now and should we be in in the future, breaks down into two main parts. There's understanding ourselves and there's understanding the market. Now, you might think you understand yourself, but actually... It's worth really thinking carefully about your business. Where is it at at the moment? What are your strengths and your weaknesses? Everybody's seen the SWOT model, and the strengths and weaknesses are really about you, whereas the opportunities and threats are about the market, so we'll come to them in a minute. So when you're looking at yourself, two good ways to look at yourself are to look at the life cycle of your products. Are they new, up-and-coming, growing products? Or are they on the way out? And also the Boston matrix, which is where you look at the market share that you've got of your products. And also, are they positioned in growing markets or not? So that's a good way to think about yourself and your current situation. You also need to look at the market, and we'll be looking at some models for understanding markets, particularly Porter's five competitive forces and the PEST model. Once we've looked at ourselves and we've looked at the market, we can then bring them together and look at basically what are our competitors like compared to us. Who are our competitors? What are the strengths and weaknesses of those competitors? What are they supplying and who to? And what's the growth like and the profitability of the market that they're supplying? And what's the growth and profitability like of those competitors? And how strong are we in the various market segments that those competitors are in? So once we've understood ourselves and the rest of the market in terms of the competition, we can then look at the customers and we can understand those. And that's the second rectangle. So we're going to look at how do we segment the customers in order to understand each type of customer that we're wanting to serve. Once we understand the competitors and the customers, we can then look at what our key success factors are going to be in making those customers prefer us to our competitors. What's our competitive advantage? So we'll be exploring that with three different models, actually. We'll have a quick look at SWOT again. We'll have a look at a little-known but really great model by Malcolm McDonald. And we'll also be looking at Porter's competitive advantage model. So we'll be able to work out what our key success factors are now, but also what our key success factors need to be in the future. Based on that, we can then work out what our strategy is going to be for the future. And to do that, we'll be looking at Ansoff's matrix. Ansoff came up with a theory that you've got your existing products that you're selling to your existing customers, and that's fine. But what other products could you sell to your existing customers? And what new customers can you find for your existing products? And he said it was very dangerous to start trying to sell new products to new customers. It's too risky. We're going to be looking at a variation of Ansoff as well called the Directional Policy Matrix, which is to do with how strong are you in the markets that are most attractive. And we'll be looking at a famous marketing model called the four Ps, which are product, price, place, and promotion. And we'll be looking particularly in detail at pricing strategies. And then we'll sum up the strategy section by looking 
at whether our strategies do really address the opportunities and threats that we've identified earlier. Finally, we'll look at the communication box, which is really promotion. So we'll look at what are the options for different channels for promotion and how do you decide how much money to spend on promotion. So that's an overview of the course. Let's get started.